I have just a short reading list that I'd like to briefly go through with y'all. This is really going to be aimed at some of our newer uh, participants around here. So a lot of these books, if you've been if you've been in the scene or you've been uh, sort of obser observing what I what I share uh, in the past couple years, you'll have seen these books before. But if you're new, check it out. So the most recent one, we're going to go back in time, starting with 2018, Banjo Roots and Branches. This is a great book. This is basically, it's a collection of research articles by a bunch of different people. You've got some academic, you know, musicology, uh, you know, organology type, uh, more technical art pieces in here. You've got some deep history going on. Um, and then, you know, you've got, for example, Pete Ross has a, a pretty exhaustive piece in here where he goes over some of the, the existing early gourd banjos, I guess all of them that we have. Uh, with sort of the the technical details of them, sort of giving you the specs and uh, some deep insight into into why he thinks they were made the way that they were. Um, there's a great article in here by by Tony Thomas that goes into great detail about Gus Cannon. So if you're into Gus Cannon and that whole period of music, you got to read that article. I learned a lot from that. Um, bunch of great stuff in here uh, I'm, I'm gonna be leaving people out but probably my favorite article of course in here is George Gibson's article which really that's worth the cost to get in the book in itself this is I think the longest article in the book with the most citations so it's pretty deep reading but George is very accessible you know he's, it's not a lot of haughty language but the title of that article is Black Banjo Fiddle and Dance in Kentucky and the Amalgamation of African American and Anglo American Folk Music. Big whopper of an article, but if you're into sort of early uh, obscure pioneer accounts of black and white folk music going back to the 18th century in places like Virginia, North Carolina, and so forth, that's a really great article. So check out this book, Banjo Roots and Branches. Highly recommended. Kind of need to read this if you want to you know, consider yourself a banjo aficionado, right? Okay, next one, really important book, <clears throat> America's Instrument. I believe it's the, America, uh, the Banjo in the 19th Century. So this came out, I think, in 99. This is a great book. I mean, this is, it's full of color photos of early banjos. Um, really nice stuff. I was, uh, you know, the, the author's, uh, Philip Gura and Jim Bowman were actually kind enough to, to sign this copy for me, which is great. Also, got I got George Gibson to sign it for me, too, since they, they were uh, generous enough to mention George in the foreword to this book. But it's just, it's just a great book. you got lots of color photos. I won't show you too much. you got to buy the damn book, right? But this is a great book. America's Instrument. The Banjo in the 19th Century. This basically will cover you all the way from... You know, in, in the 90s when they wrote this, it was about as good as you could get on the research angle, I'd say. Um, I have to be pretty conservative, you know, with, with a book like this. Um, so it takes you all the way from early stuff, and basically it's like, it really kicks off with the early, uh, you know, shop-produced banjos. Banjos made by woodworkers, and then in the factory period, it takes you on up into the early 1900s. So this doesn't get involved in any of the the jazz or ragtime or bluegrass really it takes you up to the classical guitar banjo style parlor parlor banjo parlor guitar period really great book lots of great visuals in here and great great information about about a lot of those turn of the century makers this is kind of my, my encyclopedia if i need a quick reference for uh you know turn, turn of the century makers like uh you know bacon and um uh stewart and all those people uh, I'll, I'll turn to this book it's quicker than going to the internet. Another one that everybody needs to check out is African Banjo Echoes in Appalachia. This is by C.C. Conway. Great book. Um, 
and she basically sort of goes it's 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 sort of like almost like a it's it's ethnomusicology i guess because she kind of approached it like an ethnographer she went into this community of of uh, black and mixed race banjo players in north carolina and virginia and just documented and documented their music and some of their stories and their background and took photographs and made a lot of recordings and, and made, uh, made tablature and notations and stuff. So this is a great book. Um, it's just, it's a ton of information and it's kind of scattered all over the place. It's kind of a hectic read. Um, I think any, anybody might agree, but it's, it's a great book. It should be on your shelf and you should read it. It's got a lot of fascinating information on it. Uh, this came out in 95, I believe. So again, in, in, in the early 90s, when this was coming out, there wasn't really any, this was really exhaustive, probably the most exhaustive approach to, to what we're interested in. Great book. Probably the best, you know, the big, the big towering uh, megalith in, in this scene is Sinful Tunes and Spirituals, Black Folk Music to the Civil War. This was written by Dina Epstein. Epstein, I don't know how she pronounced it, but this is a great book, and this doesn't really, it has ton, lots of banjo information in it. She was one of the first people to really, back in the 70s when this came out, she was the first person to really loudly proclaim and have proof and evidence that, hey, there's this major African uh, connection with the banjo. You know, she knew there was, there was a West African, Afro-Caribbean connection going on, and back in the 70s, that was not that was not so people were still saying crazy outrageous stuff like uh, like Joe Sweeney invented the banjo or that the banjo came from Ireland or some nonsense like this so it, this is probably this may be the the most important one this also for me this is a page turner i read this whole book no problem in like a week or something so lots of fun to read lots of great information if if you're in, not even if you're interested in just history in general if you want to know about black history or the history of slavery in this country, this has to be on your shelf. You've got to, you've got to read this book. Okay, this is a book that goes that was compiled in, in the 20s. It was put together by a guy named Dr. Josiah Combs. It's called Folk Songs of the Southern United States. I think it came out in the 20s, maybe the 30s. But what it was, this is kind of, it's a rare book um, because Combs originally wrote the book um, for some kind of research project or dissertation when he was a student or teaching over in France. Um, sort of an odd story, I don't know the details of it, but originally this book was in France and it's only by chance that it was, it was translated by somebody back into English, so we now have this book. So Combs is basically writing about this, this culture that he grew up in, this Eastern Kentucky music culture. He's writing about it for a French, you know, uh, academic audience. So a lot of detail in this book. It's very dated, so there's a lot of stuff in here that's, that wouldn't really cut it by today's academic standards. Um, but I will read you this quick passage. This will be the last thing I'm going to say, so I won't keep you much longer. But this is a fascinating passage, and there's other, many like it in, in this book. So Combs says, The Highland Fiddler has preserved not scores of jigs, but hundreds. They are brief and are played rapidly over and over. When the fiddler gets tuned up, he asks, what do you want? Someone replies, oh, something quick and devilish, which is interpreted as meaning a jig. The fiddler has a peculiar habit of tuning the fiddle for every piece he plays. That sounds familiar, right? Um, using the open strings as drones whenever possible. Y'all fiddlers take note. Here's some more interesting information. When he goes into action, the larger end of the instrument rests not under the chin, but further down on the breast. So you know how it's, it's cool now, you know, most of us old-timey fiddlers, we want to hold our fiddle down on our breasts, you know. So he's, he's describing that practice here to people in France who maybe have never seen anybody hold a fiddle like that. I don't know. Um, sometimes the player, one of whose feet is continually tapping on the floor to keep time, is accompanied by someone who taps about midway up on the strings with two knitting needles or pieces of wood whittled down fine. So he's talking about fiddlesticks there. The fiddler is much in demand at dances, weddings, Christmas parties, etc. Um, and, and it goes on and on. I don't want to get into too much more. But check out this book, Folk Songs of the Southern United States. That's all I wanted to say with that. I've kept you all long enough. Thanks for looking. Uh, check out those books. And let me know what you're reading, you know, what you guys have that I, that I missed out. Or I'd love to hear of maybe something I haven't read yet. Um, okay, thanks for looking.